retirement. After 1974, the rules of retirement changed, and suddenly it forced E's and S's into the I quadrant with no financial education, and they started to put their money into these retirement plans. And suddenly, voila, a whole new industry was born called financial planners. And today, it takes 30 days to become a financial planner. It still takes a year and a half to become a massage therapist. <laughs> you know what I mean? And what do you think of mutual funds? I think they're a great way to make money if you sell them to other people. <laughs> <laughs> well, they're, they're, I think it's one of the worst uh, places a person could put money. They really do. They make other people rich. You know, hidden fees, expense ratios, and you talk about the law of, of compound interest. Well, there's the law of compound expenses. Okay, so let me ask you this. If I say to you, invest for the long term, you know what I mean, for 30, 40 years, what do you think about that in, in, the, in a paper asset? You've I mean, lost control that quick. Liquidity is what paper assets are about. Your ability to sell and buy without negotiation problems. And so the moment you say, I'm going to buy this, I'm going to hold Enron, I'm going to hold WorldCom, and I'm going to hold you know GM, and I'm going to hold United <laughs> Airlines. And, well, you can just go on and on. Like Pan Am. <laughs> <laughs> but the moment you decide to hold that, what control do you have? Not you know. You, yeah, in real estate, you can force the appreciation, paint it, carpet. You can't do that with paper. Right. Well, Your only way. control is to sell. If you hold it forever, you're you're rolling the dice and saying, I hope it works out. Right. There's a lot of people say you know stocks are the best way to go and don't get into real estate. You know, a lot of these financial advisors. But the stocks are good for people who are not business people. You see, as entrepreneurs and real estate people, when you look at a financial statement, I personally am responsible for income, expenses, assets, liabilities. But as an investor, even in Microsoft, I have no control over income, expense, assets, and liabilities. Is that all correct? you can do is sell or hedge. That's all you can do. Well, that's, that's right. And what, what makes it worse is that you take those you take those paper assets that you don't have control over because you're investing long term, and then you put them into our 401k, so you have even less control, because once they're in that 401k, you can't take them out. You you, you really can't do anything with them. You're penalized for early early withdrawal. You're, you're, you're penalized for pulling them out, and then on top of that, you don't even get the the one tax benefit you get with paper assets is capital gains, and you put it into a 401k, you've lost that benefit. On top of that, when you pull it out. There's three types of taxes, earned income, portfolio income, and capital gains or passive income. And savings and mutual funds, what are they taxed at? Well, when you, when you pull them out, when it's going through a 401k, they're all taxed at the highest ordinary income rate. It's the worst thing you could possibly do if you plan to be rich, but if you plan to be poor, it's a pretty good plan. Robert, I've seen you take heat in the press by this, where you oh. say they're risky. And, and I'll tell you where I think the risk is. When you sit down and they say, we're going to diversify you, you know, that way if, if one company goes down, you got all these other companies to buoy you up. And, and that's fine for a non-systematic type thing, but, but a, a system-wide problem, it does not protect us if the system breaks down. Because and I it's think not it's, diversification. Yeah, it's more fragile now than I think it ever has before. And I think these people saying, well, I'm well diversified. They're not well diversified. You diversify across asset classes not just in, in bunches of stocks, yeah, in my opinion, anyway. So the problem here with diversification, it doesn't protect you from a crash. Right. And it's not diversification anyway, and Buffett does not, Warren Buffett, the world's greatest investor, reportedly, says diversification is something like it's protection from ignorance. Right. But it's ignorance from both the person selling you the plan, as well as you who invest in the plan. But this is the biggest thing that really bugs me. When Kenny and I buy real estate, we always buy insurance, don't we? Yeah. Yeah. And then when we drive a car, we have insurance. Right. right. Is there insurance for mutual funds? Well, not for the average person. No. I mean, is there, is yeah. there insurance on your 401k that what you put in will be there when you retire? And which is more likely to burn down in the next five years, your home <laughs> or your, <laughs> your 401k? And I'll say it again. We all drive cars with insurance, hopefully. We have houses with insurance. When we buy real estate, we have insurance. Our companies have insurance. But the 401k, all these retirement plans, there's no insurance on them. So if it crashes, they lose everything, and the mutual fund companies walk away with the money. And that's a higher level of education, because most people don't know how to hedge that. Nope. They don't know how. I mean, it's possible, but if you but interview you the teach. average person. Yeah, that's what we teach. That's what, that's what our advanced courses teach, is how to play but the game. the average game. person, I, yeah. I liked what your comment said. If you poll the average person, you say, tell me the difference. This is a very basic question. What is the difference between a defined benefit pension plan and a contribution plan? 
most of the people I talk to do not know that difference. And that is not, that is not a minor thing. That is a major deal. Time out. This is a very important point. See, in 1974, the rules of retirement change. Prior to 1974, most people, like my parents, had a defined benefit pension plan. What that meant was that they received a paycheck for life. After 1974, the entire world started shifting onto a defined contribution pension plan. What you put in is all you get back. And that's why these defined contribution plans, so many people are terrified of running out of money in retirement, simply because with a defined contribution plan, you can lose everything in the market crash, or you can run out of money before you die.